listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm joined today once again by Ricky Baez, and it is a Friday morning. Ricky, you're happy, you're smiling, you're going uh, you know, off for a three-day weekend. How are you today, buddy? I am ecstatic. Do you smell that, Pete? Do you smell I, that? I, I, Yes, I do. Do I? <laughs> well, <laughs> We're not together, well, well, so I'm not sure. <laughs> Just letting, just letting you and everybody know, it's football season. Ah, I am so it's happy. Deep. Oh, man, my Monday nights are filled with joy again. My entire day on Sunday is filled with, yeah, actually from Thursday all the way to Monday, it's going to be great until uh, the end of the year. So I'm just excited. Yeah, my uh, my Seminoles are, are going to play LSU this this weekend. That should be interesting. So uh, we'll see what happens and. But we know, but no NFL yet. We we have to wait a week, right? We do, we do, but it, it it's there. It's, it's there, there right? right? It's it's happening. We got a holiday weekend coming up, Labor Day, which marks the end of summer, the beginning of fall, quote unquote. For Florida, it just means you know just another summer <laughs> coming up. Oh, um, that's why I'm wearing my my white sweatshirt. I said we, I've got to you know do it up up until Monday. There's, after yeah, Monday, you can't do it rule, anymore, right? Yeah. I actually did think of that. I'm not sure why that's a rule, like you said in Florida, but. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> Florida. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> so so today we, we just did um I had you on the Finding Careers End podcast this morning. Normally we do higher calling together, but you had mentioned a topic to me, quiet quitting, which is <laughs> talked about way too often these days. Yep. Um I didn't know what it was two weeks ago, and I've heard it a dozen times or more in the past two weeks. So let's start with what is quiet quitting and, and talk about this. So quiet quitting, I'm I'm with you. Uh, before two weeks ago, I'm like, I don't know. I knew what quiet was and what quitting was, so they don't know what it was together. And um, it's a topic that came up in class. And um, at, at the end of the day, what quiet quitting is when an employee on, it, in general is it's, it's tired of going above and beyond for the organization or any organization that they decide just to show up to work and do exactly what the job description says. They're doing just enough not to get fired, which it's, I think is a mistake. It's a huge mistake. I completely understand why the employees are thinking that route, but I think it's a mistake in the long run. But that's what quiet quitting is. It's a trend. Social media is making it a trend, and it's something we have to address. So there's a lot of folks out there recommending that it's a good idea to you know stick it to your employer, so to speak. To yeah. well, they don't even maybe they don't even view it as sticking it to their employer. Maybe they view it as justified. We that's a word we we talked about on the other show that um you know it, it's it's giving what you get and no more even though we could probably talk for hours about um how uh how, you know how careful you really have to be if, if you know if you're doing anything that's non-work related at work um you're probably violating your own your own logic at the yeah. point right <laughs> yeah of, pretty much. Of only doing what's on your job description i'm pretty sure checking you know Facebook 20 times a day, uh, which, which we all do, right? I mean, yeah. not, not 20, but I don't know anyone who doesn't look at social media at some point during the day. And that's just because if you are spending so much time um, at work, that it's it's natural and normal to do, right? To you know, do, you know, be distracted to some degree, hopefully not too much by by your personal life, right? Your life doesn't stop while you're at work. And Correct. so I think it's the inverse has to be true where employees need to realize that sometimes the day doesn't end exactly at five o'clock and that's okay. Or five Correct. or yep. six or whatever your, your scheduled time is. And if you want to do everything by the letter of the law, you have to, you have to reap what you sow, I think to yep. some degree. And most people <laughs> don't like the other side of that coin. But, but Pete, I, so here's what, I think this is a good a good part a good point for me to to state what I meant by I understand where they're coming from right because there has to there's always a reason for these things to pop up and you know for for the longest time there's been this big 
idea out there that corporate America or the employers don't care about people's time. They just want to get as much time out of them as possible, which that's not 100 percent true. Right. Yeah. Corporate America needs talent. Corporate America needs people to move the needle from A to B. But there are some organizations that abuse that. And the reason I'm saying this is I understand where they're coming from is because if you have an employee that worked for an organization that did that, I get why they feel the way they do. But where the mistake comes in is to treat your next employer based on your experience from their previous employer. Right. Because your next employer could have been the best, could have been the one organization you're going to spend the rest of your career in. Right. And if you go in there saying, I'm just going to go and do exactly exactly what my JD says and that's it. And by the way, let me pause there. There's nothing wrong with that. If you all you want to do is that job and not move up that corporate ladder. If you don't want to move up that corporate ladder, that's fine. Just be good at what you do. Right. And but you can't expect to get paid more for your skills so you can expect to get promoted if you go in and just do the bare minimum because that's not it's i don't know if any employer in their right mind that would give anybody a promotion that does that right so i think people are shooting themselves in the foot when they do things like that correct and right. and i don't think anyone listening to this show would dispute that right we we talked about um quiet quitting from the employee's perspective over yeah. finding careers in so now let's explore, though, what the employers could be doing uh, that would have their employees feel that way, because you know, the blame is not just on social media. The blame is not just on the trend. I mean, th these you know, things uh, come up for a reason. And clearly there's some animosity out there that employees feel towards their their employer. Now, what we would both say and, and did say on, on the other show um, was quit. If you aren't happy mm -hmm. in your situation, find another one. Don't right. don't live with a bad relationship because that's what it is at, at, at that point. It's it's an unhealthy relationship, so don't don't remain in it. And just like you wouldn't in your personal life, so and, and just like in your personal life, the the future is not going to go the go very well if in any relationship you do the bare minimum to to you know when doing your part, right? So. Mm -hmm. You know, just just kind of look forward in that respect. So leave if your situation is bad. But for employers, what do you think they're doing or could be doing you know, differently to prevent this? But what do you think they're doing to cause it? I So I have seen some employers in the past 15 years or so that – they they expect way more from their employees. I'll give you a great example. Um, I once knew a leader that got up really early, like 2.30 in the morning, right? And the first thing that leader did was check the, uh, their, their email, send emails out, right? 3.30, 4.30 in the morning asking for information. Where, where this leader made a mistake is they expected a response relatively quickly. Like if... if oh, come if, on. <laughs> at, 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 in it the was middle of the night? It was insane, right? Like I send you an email, blah, 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 blah. Employees are like, I just woke up at 6 30 in the morning. <laughs> Relax, right? So things like that. When um when uh, you know during a meeting at 5 p.m., the meeting goes to 6, 7, 8, 8 p.m. And the employee has a family. They got all these things to do. When they get put a lot of other responsibilities from somebody else on the employee's lap and not giving them more, more money for it, when organizations do that and abuse it, that, I think, is what created this uh, this mantra that we're seeing right now of quiet quitting. Now, does every organization do, do that? Absolutely not. Does every organization in general do that? Maybe not everybody in the organization, but there may be two or three leaders in there that do it. And those three, two or three leaders that do that, those employees are fed up with it and they start doing it. They put it on TikTok, then everybody sees it and everybody thinks that's what they should be doing. But employers um, who don't have respect for people's time or what they can do and don't pay them for it are the ones who created this trend right now. So what do you do about it, right? If you're the employer, I mean, my my initial thought is if you have a tendency to do that, mm -hmm. if if you, you need people to work long hours, if you need to uh, people to be on standby to um you know to to you know to stay late, to to go out of town, to whatever it might be, 
to go above and beyond what would be considered a normal schedule, communicate that up front. You know, that yep. should be something to talk yep. about in the interview process. So I can come up with lots of reasons why that may be necessary, um, you know, depending on the the industry and the, and the type of business, but you got to set the stage for it on the front end and then no one can complain about it. So don't tell someone you get to leave every day at five and never let them leave at five. That That's absurd. And, and you're going to create, you know, a bad situation. So, I mean, to me, that seems like it should be easily avoidable. It is. And, have you heard the new one, Pete? Have you heard the opposite of quiet of uh, of quiet quitting? What or some organizations are doing? No, what's that? Quiet firing. Have you heard of this? Wait. So wait. We just quiet quitting was just born. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's how quickly, dude. Get get a neck brace because this is happening at net break speed. Yeah. Now there's a thing called quiet firing. And <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So making this up right now. I, I no no. Society is making it up as it goes along. Okay, what is quiet firing? Now here we go. This is education so, day. This is so quiet firing is what some organizations do when they don't want to f- just flat out fire the employee. They don't want to pay a severance to let somebody go. They want to avoid all those uh, all those expenses um, of, of of a layoff or just letting somebody go, and they just continue to pay the person what they do, but slowly make their life miserable at work to the point that they quit. So maybe they don't invite them to to this event, or maybe they don't give them that good account, all these things, the things to do, you know, just little, little tiny twigs and, 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 and paper cuts, uh, per se, um, uh, to just to just have the employee be so upset that he or she says, you know, forget this, I'm done, and I'm going to quit. So that is the new trend, and it's called quiet firing, which I got to tell you, from an HR point of view, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. And because I'm going to give you why that's dangerous, and then I'm going to see what organizations need to do to prevent that from happening. It's dangerous because in the legal world, for all the uh, uh, attorneys listening, there's a thing called constructive discharge. And what constructive discharge means that if you as an employer, you make your employee's life miserable at work on purpose, that the employee had no reasonable option other than to quit then that is considered constructive discharge and they can come back to you legally for that. Um, that's, that's way out there, right? But I think we can help organizations stop any of that from happening, even employees from quiet quitting. And I got a couple of points if you're ready. No, well, I, I, I'm trying to digest this. I'm looking, I just looked it up because I, I, I didn't know that, that we were going to be introducing a new uh, quiet quitting was enough. Surprise. Uh, uh, quiet, quiet. <laughs> Quiet firing. Quiet firing. Um, yeah. Is it, the the employer now wants to do the bare minimum? So what? what <laughs> okay. Before we get into the legal aspect of it, right, we should never have to get that far, it, it, where we're making it a legal issue. And and I've said that you know, for a long time as a as a career salesperson, mm-hmm. it, it's common for new engagements or relationships to begin with a contract. And you know, it's, it's been interesting over the years to see how some organizations dive into every word and detail of the contract. You know, you know, going above and beyond to, to you know, even even be concerned with the grammar of a ten in a ten page contract, right? <laughs> and um, others are you know, you know, barely look over it, sign you know, based on the the verbal you know terms that you've discussed, and 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 sign and, and without really looking at it in any great detail at all. And I've always said and thought, and I truly believe that in any business relationship, if you're having to pull out the contract, you have bigger problems. Yeah, <laughs> having to refer to the problem, the contract to settle a dispute, a disagreement, an issue, whatever it might be. It, it, you should probably consider whether it makes sense to continue that relationship. So I would make the same argument for the employee employer relationship. If it's so unhealthy that as an employee, you're you trying to do the bare minimum or the employer trying to treat you know, making a conscious effort to treat your employees um, poorly, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, why, why are we doing this at all? Let's now, that's not all companies, right? This is just, you know, some, you know, you know how it is, Pete, the 5% that do all the dirt 
makes the other 95% look bad. That's an anything, right? So not all companies are doing that, but that's the trend right now. But you're right. If this is how you decide to continue on with this relationship, just cut the relationship. If you have an employee now, okay, so I'm talking, I'm putting the employer hat on. If you have an employee who's not performing, right, coach them, teach them, lay, give, give that employee the tools they need to succeed. And if they still don't, then cut the losses, right? This is not going to work out. Do what needs to be done and cut the losses. Now, employee hat on. If you're so upset at your job, at your situation, then yeah, cut the losses as well. But to stay in a toxic relationship, that may be too much, but if you're still in a relationship that you don't like, that it's not giving you the purpose that you should feel in your weekend hours, then to stay there and continue to do so is only going to make your situation worse. So I'm looking, I am actually looking it up uh, while, while we're talking because I, you, you sprung this one on me. <laughs> that uh, what, you know, reasons why an employee employer would want to do this because okay. on the surface, I couldn't, I couldn't think of any. And, and the first one that I'm seeing is it's too, um, avoid having to pay unemployment, um, yeah. have your unemployment benefits impacted by it. Okay. I mean that now that's really dirty and deceptive <laughs> Very. as an employer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, okay. That's, that's a reason it's a terrible one. Um, yeah. are there any others that you, you can think of? Um, same with severances, right? Because if you, if you lay somebody off, you know, not that there's a law when it comes to paying a severance, but that is the rule of thumb. Um, in, if you've done it before, if you got some, if you got a policy that says you're going to pay a, uh, a week of pay for every year service and you're in an, an organization that's been around for over 50 years and most of the people that you're going to let go are 20 plus year veterans you're going to pay a lot right but that's your policy right honor your contract don't 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 put somebody in a position where they could quit just so you won't have to pay so pain severance is one of them um and um and unemployment is another um but i don't think of any other ones it, I because you're, you right? you're awful individuals could not <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah make that that's a good one right you're the top of the list no i i, I just yeah, there's, a, there's a few articles apparently this is like uh coming out you know as it's it, there's a lot it's of articles in the last off the days yeah. about this um but i think it's not new that uh organizations uh, you know, some organizations treat employees rather poorly right that that is not yeah. news um, there's always been bad employees and there's always been bad employers. Now, I would tell you that um, that's a, one of the reasons why the freelance economy is growing so rapidly. Oh. And we could talk about that today, but I'd rather sa save that for next week, actually, yes. because yeah. I think it goes hand in hand. I want to do a little more research on this quiet firing concept, because as someone who is a big fan of the freelance market and the future of it, um, big believer in it that, um, you know, I think, I think you reap what you sow on both sides. So if you're an employee who is, is quiet quitting and behaving that way, um, you, you're not, it's not, it's not going to go well for you. You're, you're going to be terminated probably. Right. And even, and you can point to your job description all day long and say, I was doing the bare minimum, right? <laughs> Just say that out loud. It sounds silly. Right. Um, if you're an employer who was, um, uh, who is treating employees badly, they're going to quit and you're going to have a difficult time you know, retaining any staff and attracting you know, new employees. So, you know, terrible idea. Now I say that about quite quitting as a Floridian, um, as a, as a, you know, owner of you know, Florida based businesses mm -hmm. who doesn't, you know, it's an at will you know, state in terms mm -hmm. of employment. So are there places where you can't terminate? Are there states, are there laws preventing employers from terminating someone who consciously says or, or outwardly says if they do, I mean, it wouldn't be quiet at that point. So maybe this <laughs> is um, a silly way to look at it, but who is doing the bare minimum, and, uh, you know, like you said earlier, you know, who ended a phone call at 5.01, right? Uh, you saw on a TikTok video yeah. um, and refused to stay on for a second longer. Are, are there laws preventing employers that you know of around the country from, from terminating employees who behave that way? 
I'm tr trying to think. So the question is, are there laws anywhere in the country preventing employers from terminating people for doing that? Yes. At face value, no. No, because again, the employer in, for, in, in, in an at-will employment, which is 49 states, an employer can terminate you for whatever reason the employer feels like, so long as it's not something that's protected by law, right? So if a meeting ends at five, and it's supposed to end at five, the meeting goes to 505, and one employee says, I'm done, because I'm done at five, right? There's no law preventing the employer from terminating that employee. They okay. can do that. Even if the employee didn't do that, there's no law preventing that, right? Because you can do it for whatever reason. So you not continuing on with the meeting is not something that's protected by law. So technically, yes, the employer can terminate. There's nothing to stop them. Now, over time, you know, laws come into play there, though, yeah. right? If you are, you know, five minutes over, because this is, but see, back to my comment earlier, I, I would tell you, if we're measuring things in minutes like that, we should just part ways. You know, it, it is a bad situation. I don't ever want to be in a situation where I have to look over my shoulder or or my employee's shoulders to see if they're checking, you know, Twitter during the day yep. or looking at their Facebook account. I assume they do, and that's okay, right? Mm -hmm. Because we do spend a lot of time at work, and so it's natural to do. Um, similarly. I don't want employees who look at their watch and say it is 501. You said I, you know, could leave at five. And 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 no one does. No, no, no employer you know, wants that. And no employee wants to be in a situation where they feel compelled to do that. That's I think the salient point here is that you're in a bad situation, end it, end it immediately yeah. on, on both sides it would and on it do so unapologetically, right? I mean, I I I just I can't comprehend why anyone would want to, you know, you can justify it in all, all day long, but why would you want to be in a situation where you have to justify, you know, that, that kind of feeling and approach to your job or to, you know, the way you manage your, your uh, workforce. And, you know, to, to piggyback on that TikTok video that, that we're talking about and, you know, thinking why, what would compel somebody to be in a Zoom meeting that's supposed to end at five. And then at 5.05, .05, you just got a few minutes left because the leader says, hey, I just got a few more things, please hang in there. And the employee's like, no, sorry, I'm done. I'm, I'm supposed to be done at five. I'm thinking, what, what would cause an employee to do that? And it hit me. They're not engaged. They're not in there for the right reasons, right? Because if the employee was, was really invested in, into the bottom line of the organization. If they really understood, they really cared about the project that they're working on, you're right. Nobody's looking at their watch. Nobody's look. It's like a great movie that you see a great movie that's supposed to last an hour and a half. And you're like, wow, this movie's awesome. And you're invested in it and it's over. Ah, it's over already. Well, you're not looking at your watch then though, right? You're invested in the idea. So I think in that specific situation, I don't know if it was the employee alone the employer alone or a combination of both, but there is a sense of belonging. There's a sense of, 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 um, of being, of caring about the bottom line of whatever project you're working on that's missing. That's causing an employee to react that way. Right. From an employer's perspective, you got to respect people's times though, right? You know, yeah. if, if, if they've been there till 930 at night and you're still, you know, in a meeting, yeah, that's going to annoy some people. If you send an email at two in the morning and expect people to respond within a couple of hours, yeah, you could, it's, some employers are, are going to feel that way. But I think what's missing is that mutual understanding of the, of the relationship and a mutual caring for the bottom line. Can I just interject since it's come yeah. up twice? Everyone stop using email that way. Don't don't use email as a text <laughs> as a text communication back and forth. It's not it's not live. It's not meant to be instant right. messaging. Stop using email that way. You're 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 you're, you're whoever does that is driving everyone crazy. That's right. right That's right. Okay. Now now back then back then I used to get up early. Now it's I don't know what's going on now, but back then I used to get up early, and that was what I would I used to do. I would send an email, but my team understood. Just because you get an email at four in the morning, it doesn't mean you have to respond at four in the morning, right? You can respond later, but that was my understanding with my team. Now it's, mm -mm, I don't wake up that early anymore. 
I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm getting old, Pete. Well, <laughs> I'm getting old, man. <laughs> unfortunately, that happens. Um, yeah, I know. I know. All right, so let's so let's break this down before before yeah. we end. Yeah. Quiet quitting, doing the bare minimum um, as the employee, and feeling justified in doing so. You can do it. You can do it for a while. You can probably get away with it, um, but it's a it's a bad idea yeah. for 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 a lot of obvious reasons. Employee employers who have employees doing that, you need some self reflection too, and yes. and say what is wrong with your environment where someone is 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 compelled to do that. What are you, you know? Did you hire wrong? Did you was your your interview practices? Or did you not explain the situation and in the job correctly? And I don't mean a job description, right? I mean, people talking and communicating directly to people. Now, if someone pulls out a job description and holds you the letter of the law, fine, you got to deal with it that way. Um, but you set the tone in the interview, bring in the people who want to be part of the mission, which is what you were describing earlier. And that should you know set you on the right course. Is there anything else to, to add to that? That. Well, what I wanted to do, so I, I might, I might contradict, contradict you a little bit. So just hear me out. From the employer's perspective, right? It look, if you see somebody, if if you have to build relationships with your team, and Pete, you know I'm big on relationships, and I tell everybody build relationships with everybody you work with, but let the employee tell you how to build, how to guide that relationship. So if you know how your team, who you, who is on your team how they work and what talents they bring to the table, you should know who wants to move up in that corporate ladder and who doesn't. Right. Right. So for the people who don't, you know, if you want to do just enough, I guess that's okay, but make sure you do it great and you're bringing value to the organization, but don't expect to be promoted. Absolutely. But for those, for, for those of you who want to be promoted, obviously you've got to go above and beyond, but the leader has to guide that employee towards that. So I guess my message is for the employers, Get to know your people, get to know your your employees. That way you know who to guide and you know who to keep right where they want to be. That way there wouldn't be any misunderstandings later on. And be clear of what is success and what is below success. You've got to be clear with that and hold, hold employees accountable. And the employees will make a decision whether they stay or they go. That's the fairest way to do it. Fair enough. So, yeah. but communication is key. Right. Absolutely. Both, both sides Absolutely. at the stage. And if there, look, there's lots of jobs out there where, you, you know, you can be on a shift and, and when the clock hits, you know, a certain time you walk out. And if that's important to you as an employee, find the, find one of those jobs. That's right. Um, and, 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 and then, but like you said, if, if you do the bare minimum, you're going to get minimum results. So, so <laughs> understand that too. So quiet firing is awful all around. We can't justify that at all in any manner. Mm -hmm. And if you think you may be doing it or your organization may be doing it, stop immediately <laughs> and go do something else with your life. Right. I mean, leave. I, yeah. It, yeah. It, that. If they're going to be quiet about firing you, you have to be loud about leaving. <laughs> I mean, that's what you got to do. And just, and just say, you know what, this is not for me. Thank you for the opportunity, but I'm going to go somewhere else. I don't know why it's just so hard to actually communicate things that way. Unapolo exactly how you said it, unapologetically. Yeah. Just, I, just be it, upfront and honest with it. Boy, there's a lot that, you know, that, that's, I think that is as much um, a reflection on, you know, how our society has evolved here in the U.S. as much as anything else. And I, I don't think, um, you know, we have time for, for that discussion today because, there, you know, but we have to we have to go back a little bit and 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 really get back to individuals, yeah. Not institutions, but at individuals. And we have so many laws, so many things that are preventing just people from working together in a healthy way. And that's once again why I want to talk about freelance, because it kind of strips away all of these things that have been forced upon us, um, where we're looking at job descriptions to make decisions about whether we we make another phone call or stay an extra five minutes and looking at contracts and looking at laws and you know, legal obligations put uh, in place by folks who have no, you know, we don't know personally and don't know us and, and know our business and know our employees and know what we're trying to accomplish. And so, you know, there's been so much of that, that it's really clouded, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. So, 
that's its own that's its own that's deal. its own yeah right <laughs> it is and and look everybody's different everybody's different everybody has their flaws just be open and honest about them and and look Pete, it, it, it's it's when you first told me that you put a1 steak sauce on your steak i didn't hold that against you right because because you know nobody's perfect i get it i completely understand but just be open and communicate how you told me because you're like i love to put a1 on it and you gotta admit i kind of paused for a second i'm like really on <laughs> a beautiful ribeye what that, that's a whole nother show sorry R ricky that that's that, that is so far down my list of flaws <laughs> that uh it doesn't even make the top 1000 um, uh, I don't know. For a steak lover, it kind of does, brother. Okay, yeah, well, <laughs> it's all relative. Um, oh, that's awesome. But but we will talk about freelance next week yes. because it, it, it's 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 a it's something that's been on my mind a lot. Uh, I just wrote a blog about it uh, that I published on Zen Gig um, two weeks ago, and it um, so much of of what's happening is unhealthy, and it doesn't have to be. That's what I believe and want to do my part to contribute to both from an employer standpoint. You want to like your employees. You want to uh, get along with your employees. You want them to be happy. I don't know why an employer, and I don't think other than again, just some, some, you know, odd situations out there, why any empl employer would behave and want differently. They may, just mm. may not know how to accomplish it. Yeah. Same thing with employees. People want to be happy where they are. They want to show up caring about the mission, as you said. No one, no one would want to to feel a, such a way where they're they're having to um, follow this quiet quitting idea. So there's some things that are flawed out there. Let's see if we can help correct them a little bit as we go forward. Absolutely, and 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 the I'm I'm excited for the freelance conversation next week because you and I are in the same boat. I I. I believe in that environment. I believe in the idea of freelancing and based on what's been happening and how relevant, uh, how quickly, not relevant, how quickly these quiet quitting trends and quiet quitting, quiet firing trends are coming up. I think that's going to push more people towards the freelancing world. And that's what's going to decide. That is what's good to, to separate people. Yep. Who is good to be a freelancer? Who's like, oh, this is not what I thought it was. I'm going to go back. So yeah, next week. I'm excited for that. All right, we'll do it. So thank you for listening today. Everyone enjoy uh, enjoy your weekend, enjoy your evening, drive safe. Ricky, I will talk to you very soon. Thanks so much, my friend. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Go Giants.